Hello and welcome to Kali Linux Wireless Pen Testing. This is section 2 Advanced Wireless Sniffing. In this section, we will be learning four different and major tools for sniffing that will be utilized during a wireless pen testing. First one, we will be exploring the Wireshark about capturing the wireless LAN traffic, and followed by, we would be utilizing the Network Miner, how to run Network Miner in the Kali Linux, and then we would be looking at dark stat where we will be able to enumerate the hosts that are connected to the same Wi-Fi that you are connected in a more graphical user interface representation fashion. And finally, we will be looking at Kismet, which is one of the old wireless network detector and sniffer, and we will be exploring multiple options specific to it. All right, let's look at Wireshark. Wireshark is the free and open source packet analyzer. It is used for network troubleshooting, analysis and software and communications protocol development and education. Well, the only source of networking truth is the packets. We all know that communication in the world of computers happen in terms of packets. The data that gets broken into packets like IP packets and it travels through the network and reaches the destination where the packets are reassembled and the data is delivered to the application that is expecting it. What we will be learning in this video is how to utilize Wireshark specific to the WLAN packets and how to filter addresses and how to filter for wireless networks in the monitoring mode and then analyze the packet for 802.11 and different type of frames the management frame control frame and data frame and also we will be taking a look at the radio tap header information as well before we jump into it let us understand what is a packet analyzer well the packet analyzer for particular type of networks it could be even for the ethernet or for wireless it's a simple concept of intercept and log traffic that passes over a digital network or a part of network. Well, let us go ahead and look at our Wireshark. Okay. Let's see. By default, it should throw up an error message when you run as a super user. In my case, I'm running as root and that is why you can look at it. It recommends you to run as an unprivileged user. Okay, on a very basic, let us take a look at one of the traffic. You can see this graph going up and down. That means there are a number of traffic that is running through this particular Ethernet adapter. Let's see what is happening in my WLAN. You can see some router advertisements going on. And you may have to take a look at what is this Wireshark is all about. It is just a tool that captured the network package, both incoming and outgoing. And present them in this graphical user interface that you can see right now and it provides the detail about each packet that is captured and this tool is extremely useful during network administrators while they want to troubleshoot something and also look at the communication that is happening between machine to machine in a particular network while debugging any connectivity related issues or details this would be very helpful and the tool is also commonly used for the protocol implementation in itself. Okay, first you have to realize that it is definitely not a rocket science to utilize the Wireshark or use Wireshark. Some people look at it like, yeah, this is very complicated and very geeky, but it is not. If you understand the computer fundamentals and basics very strong. Well, there are some features while well, you can press stop capturing packet and also you can save the packet as you like with multiple options. You can even save it as the PCAP next generation or the older version of PCAP or nanosecond PCAP and multiple different versions that you want to save it as. Well, to understand our wireless specific, we are going to turn on the monitoring mode as we discussed before to understand specific sniffing that we can do and understand how it is being captured in Wireshark and you would be able to look at the traffic that is happening in the wireless LAN. So as we do, we start the air monitor on our WLAN 
0 and we take a look at now you can see the WLAN monitor is up so we are going to do shark and you can select WLAN mon you can already see the broadcast that is happening how the beacon frames are being captured and all the traffic that is going between us and whatever the nearby wireless traffic is so now let's take a look at the package specifically so this is the hex data if you want you may able to change it to bits as well zeros and ones but technically we don't need to look at the packet details packet bytes so we can look at the packet details how I would do as a penetration tester to analyze the traffic is first I will look at the statistic and see the conversations you don't see any conversation because right now we are looking at the wireless so I will look at wireless and the WLAN traffic now you can see the SSIDs that we use normally AeroDump to look at what are the different type of wireless that is available to us let's assume if Hackme Web is one of the wireless that we are trying to penetrate we can now see how many clients have been connected with their MAC address let's say if the wireless is authenticating through the MAC address we may be able to use the password that we cracked in the last video and then change the MAC and then connect to the wireless if there is a MAC based authentication enabled let's look at this guys and apply the filter and see try and understand one of the packet completely so you can look at the frames that is specific to this frame and how many bytes and how it has been captured through the interface you can look at that radio tap header we will go through the radio tap header shortly and we can also look at how is the epoch time how many seconds the frame has been captured for and then the number of frames that it has captured so this is more on an internal very deep packet level while you also can look at the radio tap header and the MAC timestamp when the MAC broadcasted the beacon frame from the access point and also you can look at the flags and as much detailed as possible and 802.11 specific you can look at the information how the low level control packets are and the data package are the beacon frame and the type of frame which is a management frame let's try and understand first the data package these are uh, very often supplied to the packet capture mechanism it's like a fake ethernet which you can look at here it will look like the fake ethernet package and it's actually synthesized from 802.11 header you don't see the real 802.11 link header well the non data package or the one which you look at with the fake headers but can be constructed for non data well let's look at the management beacon frame the management package is usually used by the peers in the wireless LAN controllers to actually maintain the WLAN network as such uh, the importance of OSI layer 2 they are discarded by most drivers so it does not be useful in many ways while if you look at the broadcast and destination address is FFFFFF which is a fake one which is not the real one but if you look at this this is a real MAC ID the one which is broadcasting to the AP that we are able to capture the E0B9 is one of the device it could be a phone or it could be a laptop that is getting connected so you also have to understand the channels yeah the one which we similarly did in the wireless so you can look at the channels here itself in the wireless well this is more on the radio frequency in itself while we learn in the beginner course about the ranges of wireless frequency the radio frequency where you have 2412 and 2484 megahertz not that all the frequency are allowed like not all the frequency are allowed uh, well 802.11 splits the available networks in uh, different ways 
the filtering cannot be disabled this filtering cannot be disabled however special measuring adapters might be available to capture the other let's say you have a police running wireless in a specific frequency you may not be able to capture unless you have the device and then wireshark will be able to capture those packets for ourselves so we already know what is ssid the ssid is nothing but the service set identifier for the access point and then the ESSID is the extended service set identifier well we can also look at MAC addresses okay we can see some of the valid MAC addresses these are nothing but the physical address and they have two different modes like a Prometheus mode where the MAC filtering is disabled and you would be able to look at the Ethernet and especially on a protected network these adapters will not be able to decrypt it and we have to understand if we had to run this Wireshark on a Windows machine it is mandatory that you need to have a WinPCAP file WinPCAP file actually enable the adapters to capture the raw package at the same time in Linux or in Kali AirPCAP is the file that is utilized which is developed by the Riverbed technology to capture all the raw 802.11 captures one of the misconception that we have with the Wireshark is it is not a packet generator it is just the one who can capture it and through this tool you can only capture the packets and analyze them for their enhancement or for further hacking or completely understand what's in the packet and what could be the next packet and then capture and proceed with achieving the objective that we have well at the max what you can do is you can start using different types of filters and Wireshark will never warn you about any doubtful packets or malicious connections it just capture so one of the misconceptions that people have is if you utilize Wireshark you'll be able to see the good and bad traffic well the answer is no it is just used to analyze or capture everything that is going from and to a source and destination well one of the important factors in 2018 has been discussed about the channel hopping can that be captured well it depends on the device for example right now we are using an alpha card in a monitoring mode that is able to capture all the wireless traffic that is going in our area or whichever is reachable to us while the channel hopping is being currently discovered while you are able to hop from this channel to channel 6 to channel 1 and channel 1 to channel 11 so that might be interesting in future to crack how the channel hopping is happening we already see some of the scripts that has been utilized well let's look at what are the different types of filters that we can utilize ip.addr is one of the filters that you can utilize that we will use in the live traffic well this one is on the monitoring mode so this is how the packet will look like for example one of the alpha card which we are utilizing you can look at the entire details let's close this and disable the monitoring mode and then try and capture the live package let's try and capture the live package after getting connected to the network okay you have to ensure that you are connected to the Wi-Fi from the previous that we are successfully connected and now let's look at who is accessing what on the network from the other system i will try and access one of the work group all right let's access dashwire.net and then sign in and then say admin admin which is the default credentials but however it doesn't matter okay we can arrange everything by the protocol so ARP is used pretty much for the address resolution who has which IP and then give a proper name and you can also see what are all the DNS queries that I have made and let us look at how one can extract any sniffing passwords for example in this case we have my Ethernet adapter or my source this is my IP address and then the destination is 121 if you follow follow the TCP stream you'd be able to see okay success.txt is 
the response that we have received for getting okay let's follow the http stream then you still can detect this is on the firefox that is able to detect let's also look at the conversations that happened you can look at okay tcp stream which is equal to zero is the automatic filter that has been applied well the easiest way is to go to the conversations and look at the ip or the ethernet is normally a physical address let's say 65 is one of the ips that we tried and access right now a to b both the ways and then let's look at the get request follow tcp stream then first what we did is a get request then it says 200 OK. The 200 OK returned back a page, and then again it tried to access some favorcon ICO file, and we got it. And now you can see what we posted here: the clear text, username, and password. And this is one of the things that you can potentially sniff the moment you get access to Wi-Fi, and you can utilize the Wireshark to perform different type of sniffing while you will be able to capture the plain text passwords quickly if you have the private key or let's say in a during a pen test you are able to capture the private key of the organization you will be able to add the private key to wireshark and be able to decrypt even the ssl traffic some of the quick filters that one can apply is you know tcp port equal equal 80 and all the port 80 that is communicated you will be able to look at the full traffic information